Yesterday we talked about what physics means. Physics we defined as the interaction between the study of matter and energy and the interaction between those two, matter and energy. We said there's lots of different realms of physics or lots of different subcategories of physics. One of them is mechanics. And then we can break mechanics down even further into kinematics and some other things. Kinematics, we said, is the study of motion. And that's what we think physics is, right? At your level in grade 11, that's what you think physics is. It's motion. That's one branch of it. But it's the branch that we will look at, for the most part, in physics 20. Specifically, kinematics is the branch of motion, or sorry, the, the branch of mechanics that studies motion without regard to what causes that motion. We're not paying any attention to what causes that motion. Okay, we're looking at the car traveling down the road. We're looking at the rock that's falling off the side of the cliff. We're looking at the football that's being kicked through the uprights in a field goal. But we're not paying any attention to the guy that dropped the rock or the guy that, or the girl that kicked the football through the uprights. Okay, that's next. We defined two terms yesterday, a vector and a scalar, and we used a little demonstration to help you remember that. Anybody remember what the difference between a vector and a scalar is? I promised you guys yesterday that you'd all remember. Kenzie? Yeah. Good. So a vector is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction versus a scalar. It's a quantity that has only magnitude. We use the, uh, the analogy of the vector cereal box, right? It has magnitude on it. It's 400 grams. That's the size of the box. But all cereal has the size of the box on it, the magnitude. Vector cereal is the only cereal that has directions on the side of the box. Directions as to how to eat that cereal. It's not the same kind of direction that we're talking about here. This direction is a north, south, east, west type of thing. But at least it helps us to remember that a vector has both magnitude and direction versus a scalar that has only magnitude. All right. So we left off yesterday. Didn't do too much. Today I want to define three terms that are examples of vectors or scalars. And then I want to talk a little bit more about those three terms. First of all, distance. Distance. What's distance? Somebody tell me what distance is. Well, we use that word all the time, right? We must know what it means. Who can give me a pretty good definition for distance, can we? OK, good. Perfect. Perfect. I like that definition. How far an object goes or how far an object went. Let's write that down. How far an object travels. I don't care if it's the exact same words as I used. Can we use your words? That's fine. That's, that's perfect. How far an object travels, how far an object went, something like that. What's the symbol for? What do you think I would represent distance by? Usually for variables, we have a letter, or a couple of letters, or maybe even a Greek letter. Distance is simply going to be represented by the symbol D. Or often, delta D. Do you guys know what that is, that triangle delta thing? What's it mean? Change, yeah. So. What we're saying there for the distance, a lot of people use a symbol D for it. I like to use a symbol delta D because when there's a distance traveled, it's inferring change, right? You've moved from here to there. Your place has changed. You've gone somewhere. Something's changed. I like to call it delta D. The units for distance, well, there's all kinds of units that we could use for distance. Kilometers, meters. Light years is a unit of distance. The distance that light travels in one year, it's a pretty big distance. The typical units or the standard units for distance are meters. And finally, yesterday we defined a vector and a scalar. We differentiated between the two of them. Distance is a vector or a scalar. In other words, does direction matter or not? The distance from Okotoks to downtown Calgary is 40 kilometers. The distance from Okotoks to downtown Edmonton is 340 kilometers. 
the distance from Calgary to Vancouver is about 1,200 kilometers. The distance from Halifax to Toronto is about 2,200 kilometers. Is distance a vector of scale? I'll give you one more. Be careful. Be, be, uh, listen very well here, okay? One more example. The distance from Montreal to Ottawa, I think it's about 300 kilometers. The distance is 300 kilometers. Vector or scalar? A scalar. Yeah, distance is a scalar. We're talking about a distance. There is no direction associated with it. Distance is simply a scalar. All right, what about position? It sounds almost the same, doesn't it? Position, displacement, distance, they're almost the same thing. A little bit of a difference. Position is where something is, not how far it's traveled, but where something is. You may have traveled from Toronto to Montreal, but something is in Toronto. Yeah, there's a difference between how far you've traveled and where you are. Position is where you are or where something is. Where something is, where something is. I'm 40 kilometers from Calgary. Is that a pretty good uh, description of where I am? Mackenzie? No? What's wrong with that? Okay, good. I could be in any direction from Calgary. That doesn't really tell me much, right? It's a big, it's a big circle around Calgary, right? 40 kilometers around downtown Calgary. I'm 40 kilometers south of Calgary. That's my position. 40 kilometers south of Calgary. My position is given by the symbol D, where I am, with a little half arrow over it. The half arrow means it's a vector. It means direction matters. Where something is. Units are going to be meters, going to be a vector. Talking about position, we need something called a reference point. You guys know what that might mean? Kenzie said it's not enough to say I'm 40 kilometers from Calgary. He said, well, you, you have to have some kind of direction. 40 kilometers south of Calgary. What if I just said, oh, what's your position, Kenzie? Oh, 40 kilometers south. Of what? Of Calgary. Calgary is my reference point, right? When we're defining the position, we need a reference point. Otherwise, it doesn't do any good to tell us we're 40 kilometers south of 40 kilometers south of what? We need a reference point to describe fully our position. So it's a vector, we need a direction, but we also need that reference point. Displacement is going to be defined quite simply as the change in position. So where were we? Where are we? What's the difference between the two? What's the change in where we are versus where we were? Now, you're going to tell me the symbol for displacement here. Look up at the board right now. You can tell me the symbol for displacement. I know you can do this. Position is D with the arrow over it. Mackenzie, what's displacement? Good. Delta means change. So we've got position, but change in position. Delta D with the arrow over it. So units are going to be meters, vector, or scalar. Vector or scalar, Zach? Vector. Good. Of course it has a direction associated with it. It's a change in position. If position has a, uh, a vector nature, so displacement's going to have a vector nature as well. 
All right, good. We know the difference between the three of them in terms of the definitions, but let's look at them a little bit closer in terms of practicality here, okay? Let's say right now that my position, where I am, is one meter north of that wall. Okay, one meter north of the wall. Got it? Okay. That's north, that's south, that's west, that's east. There's the wall. I'm a meter north of the wall. Got it? That's where I am. That's my position. Okay? I'm going to walk five meters. One, two, three, four, five. Or at least approximately five meters. What was my position? One meter north of the wall. What's my position now? Six meters north of the wall. What's my change in position or my displacement? Five meters? Five meters? Yeah, you don't need to say five meters north of the wall. Five meters north is okay, right? Take a look at what we did over here, right? We need a reference point for position, right? Where I am, it matters what it's relative to. But my displacement, I traveled five meters north. I could travel five meters north if I'm in Airdrie, or five meters north if I'm, a, if I'm in Lethbridge, right? Five meters north is five meters north. My position isn't the same there, but my displacement would be. Does that make sense? What was my distance traveled there? Okay, remember, my position was one to the north of the wall. Now it's six to the north of the wall. My displacement was five meters north. My distance traveled is... Five meters. So distance and displacement are the same thing, right? Except displacement doesn't have, or just, sorry, distance doesn't have direction, displacement does, right? Right? What about this one? What's my position right now? One meter north of the wall. Okay, let me walk five meters. One, two, three, four, five. What's my position now? Six meters north of the wall. I'm going to walk two more. One, two. What's my position now? Uh, or eight meters north of the wall, right? Eight meters north of the wall. What's my overall change in position there? I went from one meter north of the wall to eight meters north of the wall. What's my change in position? Seven meters north. What's my distance traveled? Seven meters. Oh, it's still the same thing. Okay, try this one. One more. What's my position? One meter north of the wall. I'm going to walk five meters. One, two, three, four, five. What's my position? Six meters to the north. I'm going to turn around and walk two meters. One, two. What's my position? Four meters north of the wall. What's my displacement? No. What's my displacement? Three meters north. Right? What's my change in position? I'm four meters north of the wall. I was one meter north of the wall. What's my change? Three meters north. Doesn't matter how I got there, does it? Okay, my displacement is three meters north. What's my distance? Seven meters, right? I walked five, then two. Direction doesn't matter for distance. Doesn't matter that I turned around and came back to where I came from for distance, but it does for displacement. Here's a rule of thumb. It's not a rule of thumb. It's a rule that works every single time. Distance and displacement will be exactly the same number, but displacement will have a, a direction. Distance won't. They'll be exactly the same number every single time you don't change direction. As soon as you change direction, distance and displacement become two different values. One more. I lied before when I said there was one more. There was two more. Now there's one more. What's my position? One meter north of the wall. I'm going to walk five meters. One, two, three, four, five. What's my position? Six meters to the north of the wall, right? Turn around, I'm going to walk five meters again. Two, three, four, five. What's my position? One meter. What's the distance I just traveled? The total distance that is from start to finish. Ten meters, right? Direction didn't matter. I walked five and then five. I could have walked five that way and then five sideways. It doesn't matter. My distance traveled would be ten because the direction didn't matter for distance. What's my displacement? What's my change in position? I started at one meter north of the wall. I ended at one meter north of the wall. My displacement is zero meters, right? I, I run sometimes. And when I run, I usually run on the track out there. I'm getting old, and my knees have a 
have a tough time running on, on pavement or, or uh, sidewalks uh, sometimes now if I do that a lot. So I tend to run on the track up here. It's a little bit softer with the, with the uh, cushioning from the track, right? A little bit easier on the knees. Run 5K, run 10K, a little bit more sometimes. 5K, 5K is 12 and a half laps um, around the track. What's my distance traveled when I've ran, uh, actually 10K, let's go 10K first. What's my distance traveled when I've ran 10 kilometers around the track, which is 25 laps, each lap 400 meters, okay? 400 meters around each one, I run 10K, I run 25 laps. What's my distance travel? 10 kilometers. What's my displacement? Zero. Zero is my displacement because I end up where I start at now. I was going to use 5K as an example. That was a bad example, right? Because what happens when I run 5K? I run 12 and a half laps. What's my distance traveled? 5K. What's my displacement? It'd be 200 meters there, right? Because I've run, I'm 200 meters away from where I started. Does that make sense? Okay. So we got the difference between distance, position, and displacement. Good. Got a little bit more to tell you, and then we're going to do a problem here. Displacement, the change in position, can be found in a couple of ways. If we have two positions, where I am versus where I was, then we subtract them to get displacement. So let's go back to our example of walking for a second, OK? I started one meter to the north of the wall. I ended six meters to the north of the wall. How did I find my displacement? Six minus one is? five meters north of the wall. I subtracted those positions, right? Right? Okay, let's do it this way. Let's, let's say that I don't have my position. I don't know what my position is. don't know what my position was. But I walk five meters to the north and then two meters to the south. What's my displacement? Three meters to the north? What did I do? I added those. Five plus negative two gives me Three. So when you've got positions, you subtract them. When you've got displacements, you add them together. If there's two of them, you add two of them together. If there's 14 of them, you add 14 of them together. All right, so we're going to say we're going to subtract positions to get displacement. Or we're going to add displacements to get displacement. All right? I'm going to ask you a couple quick questions, and then we'll do a problem here. The answer to each of these questions that I'm about to ask you is either position or displacement. OK? It's position or displacement. I'm going to ask I'm going to give you some variables. I'm going to give you some numbers. I'm going to ask you to tell me, is that a position or is it a displacement? If it's positions, you would subtract them to get displacement. If it's displacements, you would add them to get the total displacement. OK? I walk three kilometers to the north. I walk three kilometers to the north. Is that a position or a displacement? Displacement. Right? It's change in position. So I would add that to another displacement to get a total displacement. I bike 12 kilometers to the west. Position or displacement? Displacement. My house is 1.7 kilometers southwest to the school. That's a position. That's where my house is, right? Um, Regina is 750 kilometers east of Calgary. That's a position. I drove uh, 500 kilometers from Toronto to Ottawa. That's a displacement. That's my change of position. Ottawa is 500 kilometers east of Toronto. That's a position. Does that make sense, guys? Now remember, if you got two different positions, you subtract. 
if you have two different displacements, you're going to add them together to get displacement. All right? Okay, let's take a look at a problem here. It's going to come from your textbook. Some of you don't have this textbook yet. If you don't, you can download it. It's free. We have the username and password. Otherwise, you can pick up a copy of the library here. Example 1.1, the first one in the book, page 9, says, Travel, traveler initially standing 1.5 meters to the right of the Anukshuk, which is it's kind of a statue made out of rock, right? First Nations people would build Anukshuks traditionally, but we do it too, right? You know, we go to, uh, you know, to a riverbed and we pile rocks up on, on the riverbed and build these little statues, these Anukshuks. She's initially standing 1.5 meters to the right of the Anukshuk. She moves so that she's 3.5 meters to the left of the Anukshuk. Determine the traveler's displacement algebraically using directions and plus minus sign. Forget about that right now. Forget about what we're trying to find here. I want to ask you another question. What do we have given to us? What is this 1.5 meters thing? Is that a position or is that a displacement? That's a position, right? That's where the traveler is, or at least was. That's my initial position. I'm going to say that's D with the arrow over it, right? Position, initial. 1.5 meters to the right of the induction. She moves so that she's 3.5 meters to the left of the Anukshuk. What is that? Is that a displacement or is that a position? Did she move 3.5 meters? Is that her change in position or is that where she is now? Sorry? Yeah, that's where she is. So what is it then? It's a position, right? That's her final position. She is there 3.5 meters to the left of the Anakshuk. We want to find the displacement. Okay, we got two positions. We want to find displacement. What do we do? Add or subtract. If you have positions, you subtract. If you have displacements, you add. So we're going to subtract these. We're going to first do it just kind of using directions, and then we'll do it mathematically by, by subtracting the two here. All right. Using directions, look. We go 1.5 meters, sorry, we start 1.5 meters to the right. Here, let's look at the original diagram here. We start 1.5 meters to the right. We end up over here. If we look at this traveling uh, from this 1.5 meter position to this 3.5 meter position, where are we? Or how far did we travel? What's our displacement? It's five meters, right? Five meters to the, to the left, right? Let's do it using plus and minus signs, though. And this is what I wanted to get you used to, because this is how we're going to do things the rest of the year here, using plus and minus signs, algebraically. Displacement is final position minus initial position. Remember, if it was displacements, we'd add them. If it's positions, we subtract them. The final position is, what should I'm about to do? Negative 5 meters. Why did I say negative 5? Why did I say negative 5? Yep. Uh, not because I moved backwards. No, not because I moved backwards. This negative 5 doesn't describe where I've moved. Okay, it's where I am. Okay, it's where I am. I am on the other side, to the left, right? It's not because I've moved to the left. It's because I am on the left. Right? We're talking about positions here. This is where I am at the end of the problem, 3.5 meters to the left. Or shouldn't be 5, though. It should be 3. 3.5, right? Here's what we're going to do. At the beginning of the problem, we're going to say to the right is positive and to the left is negative. That means that 3.5 meters is to the left. Final minus initial. What's negative 3.5 minus 1.5? Negative 5? What does that mean? What's my displacement? 5 meters to the left, right? Now it means I've traveled 5 meters to the left, right? My final position was 3.5 meters to the left. I've traveled 
five meters to the left. Does that make some sense? When you see these questions pop up in a minute that you're going to have to do yourself, first identify what you got. Do you have two positions or do you have two displacements? If you have positions like we do here, subtract them. Make left negative, right positive, and subtract them. If you have displacements, then add them together. I walk 3.5 and I walk 1.5. We're going to add them together. Then. All right, have a look at those three questions, please. You can open up your textbooks or look it up on your phone if you can't see it on the board here, or you can just look it up on the board if, if it's easy enough for you to see. All right, let's take a look at number two. It says, to perform a given goal, a basketball player fakes out the defense and by moving 0.75 to the right and then 3.5 meters to the left. What is the player's displacement from the starting position? What do we got here? You got two numbers, right? To the right and left. You know what? Before we do anything, let's define right as positive. That means left is going to be negative. Something is positive 0.75 meters, and something is negative 3.50 meters, because it's to the left. What is it that's 0.75? Is that a position, or is that a displacement? In other words, is that where something is, or is that how far something's gone? Position or displacement? That's a displacement, yeah. The basketball player moved 0.75 meters to the right. That's the player's first displacement. And then the player moved another 3.5 meters, but in the opposite direction this time. We're going to add those or subtract those? We're going to add them. If we have positions, we subtract. That's what we did in our example problem, right? If we have displacements like we do right here, we're going to add them together. Now, maybe not the greatest example here, because in the end, adding these two numbers together is kind of like subtracting, right? 0.75 plus negative zero, uh, 3.50. It's going to give me negative 2.75. That's the same thing as subtracting them, right? But it's not always the same thing. So just keep that in your mind, right? Positions, subtract. Displacements, add. Sometimes it's going to be the same either way. Sometimes it's not. Positions, subtract. Displacements, add. By the way, we could finish our final answer like that negative 2.75, why would that be okay? Why would it be okay to leave it like that instead of saying 2.75 to the left? Yeah, we already said that, right? If we look back to what I wrote down, we know that left must be negative, so that negative means to the left. It's also okay to change that to 2.75 to the left and write that down in words. That would be okay as well. What's not okay? I got negative 2.75. 2.75 left would be okay as well. What's not okay? What if I said negative 2.75 to the left? What did that mean? That would mean to the right. That would be wrong, right? It's either negative or it's the word left. Both of them mean left, but two of them make it positive, right? All right, let's take a look at number three. While well, building a wall, a bricklayer sweeps the cement back and forth. Here's where, here's where the cement starts, back and forth. What's the distance traveled during that back and forth motion? distance traveled? 1.7. What's the displacement? Zero. Zero. So when we're trying to find the total distance after, after four times, 1.7 plus 1.7 plus 1.7 plus 1.7, let's add those distances together. And we're going to get uh, 6. Point, what is it? 6.8 meters. But if we're trying to find the displacement, we're going to add the displacements together as well. But it's going to be 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 gives me 0. zero. Right? It's like when I run 10K around the track, right? 25 laps around the track. 0 meters plus 0 meters plus 0 meters plus 0 meters 25 times is 0 meters for displacement. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Just a little bit more to do with you. Well, I shouldn't say that. You guys have a little bit more to do, and I'll take a walk around and see how you guys are doing with it. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, page 10, questions number 1 to 7. Uh, this is it for today. You finished this up early? Great, you're done. If not, this is going to be homework, and we'll check this over tomorrow. Okay.